three, two, one. Love Talk Radio. Here you go. It's Monday. Time for Monday Moods. Time to set it in motion for the day. Put an intention out there for the week. Get control over that great head of yours and join us here in the Influencers. Today is all about the St. Louis Business Club with Mr. Brian Lent. Good morning, Brian. Good morning. How are you today? I'm groovy. How are you? Doing all right. All right. This is your host, Dr. Deb Carlin, with my co-host, Brian Lent. So here we are on this platform known as Blog Talk Radio that started out about a decade ago as the K Factor, where K equals kindness, and the factors are all the things that lead to it. So I keep leading you to it. <laughs> I keep leading you to people that I know are kind and smart and wonderful and have got big hearts. And guess what we're all trying to do? We're in here being the influencers over on Partners in Excellence Media on YouTube, What do we want to influence? The goal is to influence your kindness and your love and your intelligence and help you get the life that you really want through your business. Because, you know, we're all out here making it happen, aren't we, Brian? Absolutely. So what are we trying to make happen? What, what, What the heck are we trying to do? What are you doing? What am I doing? I think the biggest thing that I impress on is... And the biggest focus I've had over the last year is really trying to develop community. Because if anything has been taught to me over the last number of months, it's that trying to do things on your own is next to impossible. Oh. And and trying to navigate things that you don't understand is is a harder way to go about it. And so my my mode is always, who can I get involved? How can I get somebody else to help either guide the direction, uh, offer some insights or outsource directly to them. And so I'm always looking at this community aspect and how we can kind of grow together and and develop one another alongside each other. Absolutely. You know, it's interesting because over the last several months, I'm going to, you know, kind of take us back through 2020. Um, The year that people wanted to get rid of, well, hello, it's 2021. Is it feeling different? like remarkably different, like you turn the calendar page and all of a sudden it's everything I ever wanted. It's amazing. (laughs) Isn't that how it works? (laughs) I don't understand this. I mean, all over social media, people are posting these things. I want to cancel my subscription in 2021. I'm dissatisfied with the service. And I'm thinking to myself, be careful what you say. Yeah. Be careful what you put out there because you put that message out to the universe. You, you know, I'm saying, hey, look, it's a new year. It's a new day. Yeah. You know, it's a new hour. This this whole last year, and you and I have talked about this in a number of different ways at different times. Um, it's really about learning how to live in the contrast of where you want to be. We've all been living in the contrast of where we want to be. And so since we can't change the outer world, we can change our inner world and we can change, you know, in our head in our heart, and then we can change our Zoom room. (laughs) That's what we can really change. And that's what I've done. That's been my solution to 2020. Yeah. And all of my my issues, you know? It's like, just have have a Zoom room and bring people in here, you know? Come on in here, we'll talk. Yeah, it's amazing to see how things have adapted over the the years, uh, specifically 2020. Yeah. uh, Adaptability is at the absolute core of entrepreneurialism. Um, and I think just about everybody has looked at the past year and said, what do we have in our plans? What was everything that we wanted to accomplish during the year? And you just throw the planner in the trash because nothing went to plan. And, <laughs> and the folks that can absorb and uh, per, you know, persevere, yeah. uh, which is very much at the core of uh, business and entrepreneurialism are the ones that are going to continue on and, and keep after it. But you know, I think there's two things that, that uh, came to mind when you were talking is that I spent a good portion of 2020, uh, specifically in the early months of the pandemic and, and just all of the uncertainty, really reflecting and going inward. I would spend many days out on walks or runs, and I would listen to audiobooks. And so I, I looked at a lot of introspection, a lot of 
uh, spiritual and, and self-development types of, of books in order to educate myself and get grounded so that I knew, okay, when this thing lets up, let me make sure that I'm prepared uh, internally for what's going to come externally. Awesome. Um, and and the, 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 the difficulty, the frustration that I think everybody is, de- is dealing with is that we all want to get going and get this stuff behind us that we're all dealing with. And I think that was the, um, you know, the, the uh, manufactured deadline of 2020 going behind us that all of a sudden, hey, we can leave this thing in the past and <laughs> lo and behold, here, here it's still in front of us. And so my reaction to that, and I think as, um, as a business owner, one of my superpowers is jumping into things honestly and identifying exactly what it is. You know, if you're, if you're struggling with new clients if you're struggling with adapting from in-person connections to Zoom rooms and, and, and virtual, if you're dealing with um, you know, a, an office space that you're managing overhead on but you don't utilize any longer, I think it's very relevant and very honest to bring those things to the forefront and talk to all the parties that are uh, involved and say, how are we gonna, how are we gonna work through this? What, what's the next step? How do we try and use community in order for us all to absorb what it is that we need to absorb? And so that's kind of the state of being that I'm in right now with, with all of this adaptability and perseverance. It's, uh, you know, it's a daily thing and, and it's much easier when you, um, when you work inside of a community and you, and you rely on others. Mm-hmm. You know, it's interesting. I'm wondering, so during, during this year, you and I have gotten involved with each other. We've known each other for a long time. We've come closer together. Because um, I know in that introspection, you thought, yeah, Deb. <laughs> <laughs> so we've come together and we're doing this show and, and looking for the ways in which I can be supportive of you. I love the St. Louis Business Club. I love the whole model of it. Let's make this everything that you've ever dreamed that you wanted for this kind of thing to be. And then what is it that we can do to um, identify, like I'm sitting here thinking, what are the things that you think, Brian, you've been able to do with your club to get people through the transition? Uh, Because all these people were with you walking into 2020, right? Like they started in maybe 2018 or 2019. So what, what's happened with your whole group that you, as the, as the leader of all that, as the, the founder of it, the, 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 the grand poobah, <laughs> <laughs> what, what have you noticed and what's happened with people? How are you, how, how is everybody doing? I think, you know, there's, I've always had this concept of creating a show called In Between the Pictures. Yeah. And, and it's all about the fact that we all utilize zoom rooms and social media and this front facing persona to put on a good face and say in between me being here and and primed and proper and my background's correct, we are struggling and we're dealing with real life. And in between the pictures is where the real reality happens. And so I, again, I was trying to bring that into the zoom rooms, into the social media and have realistic conversations and that's what I, that's where relationship is for me. That's the definition of relationship is having those more authentic relation or, or conversations with folks. And so that is something that I try to bring to the group and to the community. Um, I think it's been interesting because I am typically the head cheerleader, the head poobah, whatever you said, uh, for, for the group, because it's, it's my uh, it's my vision. It's my hope to see us all come together as a community and expand this business club so that we have you know multiple resources and a lot of people to rely on uh, in order to help navigate our own life and business. But I am being pushed more than pulled into this virtual operation, and and it's it is I just I just showcase the frustration because it's real. And I don't want to say that it's not relevant or it's not, it's something that I'm trying to avoid because I have developed my entire style and everything that I do for in-person interactions. I, I want to be with people. I like the energy of being with people. My entire business model is for folks to meet in person in different theme spaces 
yeah. you know, and then once that has been established, you also, you know, add the virtual component to it, but it's not the other way around. It's not, let's build a virtual business. And then if we have time, let's meet in person. And so that is the, that is the primary thing that I am um, managing at this point is how do I, how do I pivot? How do I adapt into more of a virtual environment reluctantly? And so at first I have to get over my own mindset of saying, I don't want to do it. And so I'm trying to figure out ways to, to not have to do it. Thank but, you for being here. <laughs> what's that? Thank you for being here. <laughs> Absolutely. I'm, you know, and I think it's part of that repetition, the practice, you know, and that's a big part of the, the mantras of the business club is that I want people to be in situations where they can practice life and business, yeah. practice, practice, practice. And then when you're confronted with the reality of the situation, it's easy. Yeah. And so that is the whole essence of the club. And so, you know, the more we get into these Zoom rooms, the more we do virtual operations, the easier it becomes and the more familiar we get with it. And then, you know, the drive to the office and the, you know, setting up other things, event planning, that might become more of a more tedious because we're getting used to this, this yeah. normalized lifestyle of yeah. being in our own homes and virtual connections. So. So let me ask you, I noticed that like um, you've invited me to come into the um, the St. Louis Business Club on different occasions. And and it's interesting. And it, it only just now registered to me. You are never there in your home when you do those meetings. You go to the St. Louis Business Club and you get set up and there are people who actually come and join you in there. You yeah. must be like in ecstasy when you get to see real life people and be in the same room we've you know i've i've adapted to this in-person virtual hybrid where we've gotten the technology where we have a screen in the room we have the owls technology and the 360 camera right. so that we can try and make a seamless um experience for those that are at home and those who are um comfortable coming in person yeah and so that has been part of the adaptation you know my preference is to have maybe one or two people on virtual or have guests from around the country, around the world that come in as special guests. But I do, I want it to be in person because I think there's something tangible about the energy, about the space. And that's, that's been a big part of my history. Mm -hmm. And so when I do have the opportunity to bring people together, which is part of my forte, um, yeah, I do enjoy it. It's, I've been in the, in this situation for the last several months where I'm going to an office that's built for 40, 50 people, and in many cases I'm by myself. And so, and I think a lot of people are navigating similar situations where you're trying to figure out what do we do with this old structure, this old paradigm that we've built all of our operations on? How do we adapt and develop things and adapt quickly so that we can navigate the newest situation? And that's that's why I like putting people together and having this kind of group genius model where we all throw ideas, we have questions and answers, and, and then we all move forward together with a good feeling that says, yeah, the majority of us think this is a good way to chart our path moving forward. And so uh, I'm, I'm, I always tease that honesty is probably my best and worst trait because I just tell everybody exactly how I feel and where I'm at. I try and do it uh, politely, but uh, that's just my style. And so, um, you know, I hope, I hope, I'm hopeful that the um, environments, the, uh, the risks, the things that are impacting us that seem a little um, overwhelming at times start to, you know, tamp down a bit, but I don't know, you know, I, I think I've mentioned that this to you in the past. I, I consider myself an expert in risk assessment because that's where I've been in terms of finance and, and business uh, for many years. And this risk that we're confronting from a political risk, from a economic risk is something that's very uh, unsettling because it's new and it's, it's a new dynamic that, that takes some critical thinking and some, uh, some analysis to, to determine which way to, to go because we're getting a lot of very interesting and, uh, and muddled data points. So, so what has this year been like for your membership? It's been, um, it's been different. Um, 
you know, in the past when I built a membership organization, it was all about, you know, getting a trajectory of growth that felt comfortable for the space that we were in uh-huh. and the people that we were around and the projects that we could uh, pursue. Uh-huh. That was always a steady growth with, with this last year, it's just been all over the place. I've had, you know, uh, clients that come in, I've had projects that have been presented. I do a lot of connecting for folks to have their own business developed and their own services sold. Um, I like to make a lot of relationships that has stayed fairly consistent, but there's, there's not that consistent, uh, process and, um, expectation of, of revenue or projects moving forward. So one of my favorite things to tease about entrepreneurs is you're almost always buying months and how many months you can continue doing what it is that you're doing. So it's like, Oh, I got enough. I got enough money to make it four more years. You know, I could do this just, you know, cavalierly for four more years or things happen poorly. And you go, I think I can pay everybody for another month. I think I can make payroll this week, you know? And I think a lot of people are navigating oh those. My God. Yeah, absolutely. And for me, I can, um, I can do the base operations of things very easily, but that's not what I'm in this to do. I, as a business consultant and a, and a investor, I'm always looking for different projects to get involved with. And it's been, it's been a challenge to determine which things to invest my time, energy, and capital into. And so that's what's been the most unsettling. So membership has been not my primary focus because people don't want to come meet in person. So I've, ad- I've adapted to virtual operations, which just may have stayed steady. Membership. Yeah, virtual membership, right? Yeah. Yeah, which is fine, you know, and still making positive outcomes, making good connections and, and creating the relationships and, and um, solidifying the relationships we already have. But it has not been a growth, it has absolutely not been a growth metric that we're on. It's just been let's stabilize and, and figure out what's going to be next when things settle down. And so, again, it's been um, challenging, you know, and I think it's, it's, um, dishonest to say, oh, things are great. You know, things are going as exactly how I expected them to, you know, no, I don't have a clue what's going to happen at this point because there's so much, uh, outward risk and, and, um, uncertainty that I don't know. I mean, I look at our small business community in St. Louis and our restaurants have just been decimated. The hospitality industry has just been decimated because of the restrictions that have been put on them. And I'm not saying that people shouldn't be cautious, but we just don't know whether when all of this is gonna let up. And so when you're trying to consult and, and, um, and help from a business perspective, and you're the one who's supposed to be telling them how to get it done and you don't know, it's an unsettling position to be in. So, so uh, I am really encouraged about the the group called Barstool. Mm-hmm. You know, as of last week, and I think it's I'm, I think it's like doubled over the weekend. They had raised twenty two million dollars. Yeah, they're distributing that out to restaurants and bars around the country. Mm-hmm. So anybody who's in our audience needs to be hearing that and contacting them, saying, "I have my hand up in the air. I'm calling for help." Yeah. So, so there's always uh, solutions out here. What, what I was really wondering is, is the leader of the St. Louis Business Club, have your members, you've invited them into live meetings as well mm-hmm. as virtual meetings. Sure. I've been in on several of those and, and people are, are coming from virtual space. I'm coming from a virtual space and, and people are still coming in live. Um, What's the level of, of assistance that people get when they're a member of the St. Louis Business Club in, in relation to the kind of suffering that they're doing? Because I'm hearing the stories, mm-hmm. you know, um, but I don't, I don't have a really good feel for what are the things that people have encountered, whether it's your core group um, that you've identified as your masters or if it's the other membership, how are they all doing? I mean, are there people who are who are thriving? Are there people who are suffering? Are there people who have pivoted? Are they in the middle of that? What's going on over there? It's just a huge variety. I mean, <laughs> there are 
you know, some of the bankers that I know that I'm connected to are as busy as they've ever been because they're dealing with government loans and the PPP and they've got, you know, applications that they can't keep up with. Right. And so there's, I'm sorry. Is that part of your membership? Sure. Yeah. I mean, there's people that we're connected to that have um, every, every different locality or every different uh, modality. I mean, uh, folks that are in wellness, the ones that have pivoted to a virtual offering have done halfway decent. But when you're trying to get people to come in person to uh, teach, you know, mixed martial arts or yoga or anything of the, that sort, a lot of people are health conscious. And depending on where you're getting your news, they're health conscious one way or the other. You know, some mm -hmm. on the, in the wellness community are, are, are thinking, my immune system is fantastic. I can go and do anything I want. That's the whole reason I'm in wellness. And they're cavalier and they want to come out. And then there's other in the, in the wellness uh, space that I think are more geared towards the traditional medicine and what they're receiving from the media and, and they're scared. And so they don't feel comfortable coming out. And so that's, it's a very odd place to be, to have people in the exact same industry on completely different sides of the aisle in terms of what they want to do. And so that's been interesting to navigate. Folks that are in retail are also having a, a, a big difficulty in, in, navigating you know a uh, transition from people coming in their store and being able to purchase things as they come through with masks on now uh or are they doing you know curbside pickup and so they're just i think it's just this mild sense of overwhelm that everybody is adapting at the same time to something new and some industries are getting blasted because they have more than they can handle and then the other ones are getting you know um, decimated. And so it's just, an, it's a tremendous variety. And I typically thrive on um, change and challenge and all these things. But I also want the marketplace to be very honest. And I think that's the only way that capitalism thrives is when you have an honest uh, market dynamics. And there's such misinformation, regardless of which side of the political aisle you're on. Um, that we're it's bad data in bad data out and so we just don't know how to navigate it all so well, here's my thought about that in in listening to your your members who come into the meetings like i was at one that was a a pitch and you have a couple of guys in there and what are they talking about they're talking about a sauce yeah we have um uh one of our one of our members uh runs a beer sauce shop and they specialize in what he calls the flavor experience and so it's all about craft beer and, and sauces that go with barbecue and hot sauces and things like that. And then everything in between. So they it, really anything that is around food and, and beverage. And these guys are rocking and rolling. Their, their concept is fantastic. Yeah. And luckily, beer is one of these things that people buy regardless of whether the, the economy's thriving or in the crapper. And so beer is a good place to be in. Yeah. Um, I think a lot of people are cooking more in their homes. And so the sauces and things like that there benefit. You but they also have a restaurant element to their store. And in St. Louis County, they're not allowed to have folks come in and, and have the restaurant experience. And so, yeah. again, it's just all these different things that are new that people are navigating. And I have two philosophies on work. I think the bureaucracy that gets in, in, in between efficient work can hold us back. And I think in many cases, government gets in the way of just doing something. Mm -hmm. Perfect example is when I'm trying to get my location opened, the local municipality comes in and tells me all these different things that I need to fix in order for what they deem to, to be safe for the location. Now, as an owner operator of a location, more than anybody, I want the place to be safe for the people that I put in there. But they will give you things that are that are cost prohibitive or don't make any sense, right? From a okay. business perspective. Right. So to me, that is something that gets in the way of a business mentality, critical thinking mentality, entrepreneurial minded mentality. The 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 um, opposite of that is aligning people with the kind of work that they are internally motivated to do, mostly aligned with and can thrive inside. And that's really what the business club is all about, trying to identify people that love what they do, are passionate about what they do, and give them more of that type of business. And we're just, we're dealing with so much uncertainty in, in the marketplace 
then I think we're getting blasted with all this kind of bureaucratic, I'm trying not to say a bad word, BS, yeah, yeah. Uh, that, yeah. gets in, that gets in the way, yeah. that gets in the way of us doing good, efficient work. And so I think we're losing efficiencies, we're losing time, we're losing, um, you know, uh, a lot of efficient processes, spending all of our time worrying about uncertainty and adaptability. And so uh, that's, why I was, that's why I was so impressed with that meeting that night, because the people who were doing their pitches, I mean, they were fabulous. There was um, the guys who talked about their beer craft and their sauces yep. and how flavor experience. I didn't hear the downtrodden. They were talking about, you know, business is going on. And I felt and witnessed their pivot. And I thought, well, this is really healthy. And, and, and I was attributing some of that to their attitudes and, and their, their resilience. But I was also attributing it uh, in, in, in large measure to you and to the St. Louis Business Club because you have set up an arena where they can come in and go, ah! And then they can also come in and go, hey, listen to this. And then get some ideas about how to pivot and do it. So those guys, even though they've got this restaurant that they can't be doing the things that they wanna be doing in it, they still are doing business. They still are growing. They're still looking for capital. They're still out there making things happen. Yes. Oh, absolutely. And I think there are thousands, if not millions of businesses and business owners doing the same thing. Yeah. What I will say is that uh, Rick and Andrew who are at the core of that business are extremely entrepreneurial minded. Yeah. They understand the adaptability and the perseverance and the passion that comes along with creating a business. Yeah. I think there are a lot of business owners that are having a struggle uh, navigating a lot of that. And that that's because they're not members I of the St. Louis Business <laughs> Club. And, and now more than ever, it's important. It's important to have a, a group of people to rely on and, and bounce right. ideas off of. And, and so I love that. So I heard them. And then at another time, I heard... Um, the gentleman who's got what a pink squirrel of some sort that's yep. around doing video things, and he's really thriving. He is. Um, same same story. So Fize uh, runs Video Squirrel, which is a just phenomenal technology. You know, yeah. it creates these shoppable videos, and and you brought up Barstool because that's one of the platforms that we're looking at to um, to potentially build an e-commerce site about St. Louis based businesses. And, and other things, you know, and so creating these shoppable videos is a great way to adapt to what's going on in the marketplace. Now, Fi specifically and Video Squirrel, they had done years of research and development for their technology and put millions of dollars into this platform. And they were launching in March of 2020. Yeah. And they launched and the whole world shut down and so again they had to they essentially spent all of 2020 giving away their product for free uh in order to get additional um you know capabilities and and case studies and and they've been in the mode oh. of developing yeah but Fize is off the charts in terms of his capabilities and talents and his pedigree in the business world he's he's run companies that are at the world stage um very very high level and to have him as a part of our club is an absolute gift for, for me specifically, for the St. Louis region, and ultimately for a much, much larger um, platform. And so he and I are collaborating on um, multiple projects, but specifically trying to build um, an e-commerce solution that allows our St. Louis businesses uh, to be shown, to, for people to know that they're St. Louis based, and that folks that are interested in keeping the money inside of our local economy, they have that capability. FISE has done a fantastic job of researching how much of your dollar stays within the economy, depending on where you spend it. So if you spend your money at a big box retailer, you know, a good portion of it goes to, uh, you know, somebody in another state or another country. And if you go to a franchise, the same story, and then the more and more you go to a locally owned and operated store, 70, 80, 90% of those dollars are gonna stay inside of the local economy. And so for the folks like myself, who very much wanna support our locality and our St. Louis based businesses, we wanna try and offer a solution to, in order to do that. 
Mm -hmm. So I was really charged up. So there's these different people who I've met inside of your, your operations there. So, and then there's Dr. G. Of course. He, he Dr. Garjula, mm -hmm. I say it right? Yeah, Garjula. I love that name. You know, he is this doctor of chiropractics and he's talking about the ways in which he sees people. He brings people in, in person, but he's also got a virtual operation that he does where he can, he can do a number of things. So, you know, Brian, I, I think that you don't credit yourself enough. I'm just going to say it right here for the entire listening audience in the world to hear. You have a, you have a lot of confidence, but you also have got this humbleness. I keep telling you, more people need to know about St. Louis Business Club. And I think that you're providing an atmosphere that really, you know, here's what's really weird about me this year. I'm going to tell you, sometimes I think I've been with people. Like, I think I'm with you twice a week, you know, yep. well, yeah, we are in a virtual space, but your personality, the way that your atmospheres are, the way that we come together, the way that you've welcomed me into the club being virtual, being in another part of the country, I still feel like I've walked in, I've gotten to know you on another level. Mm -hmm. and actually, it's it, I've gotten to know you much better because it's a much more intimate space. We don't have the interruptions in a Zoom room that we have when we're live, right? Sure. And and the other the other part of it is you've welcomed me into these master meetings that you do and the pitch meetings that you do and then some one on one meetings with people like Dr. Garjula and and Fies you know we're sitting in a in a in a meeting with him in Zoom and I feel like I've met these people in person because the conversation is so intelligent and personable and intimate. And then there's um, there's Tim Hobbs, yeah. and and you know he's got Emergent Wellness, and he's got um, a couple of different companies. And I'm thinking these people are all about business. They're mm -hmm. all about having a dedication to our Show Me State of Missouri, yep. and in St. Louis. It doesn't mean that they're not national. It doesn't mean that they're not global. But it means that in the St. Louis Business Club. Our focus, and I say our because I'm a part of that, our focus is on the beauty of this big town, small city that yeah. is quintessential, that is a little Southern and feels fabulous and friendly. And, and um, you know, really, it's like a beautiful sweater, the way that people have been knitted together there. Yeah. And, and at the St. Louis Business Club, I don't hear anybody being in there, Brian, who is saying, I don't know what the hell I'm going to do. I am completely lost because you're already tending to them. So, you know, for our listening audience, I want them to know if you're an entrepreneur and you're wondering where in the world can I go? No place is open. The St. Louis Business Club is open. Yeah. I need support. I don't know where to find it. Brian Lunt is in here. He's support. He's available. People need to know. I know that you're talking about days when the place is empty, but you know, it's a perfect time for people to come out, leave your home, leave where you're living, go to the St. Louis Business Club. It's a beautiful space. There are friendly people there. You'll get time with Brian right now that normally you would never, he's, you know, uh, tied up with other people. I mean, I used to chase him around his last place trying to figure out, hey, can I grab your shoulder over here for a minute? Because there were so many people on mass that wanted your time and your attention. And right now is the perfect time to come in, get set up, get established, and you're not outrageously expensive. So it's not like people are saying, well, I don't have the money. And right. not only that, if you want to do a PPP or an IDL loan or something, you can probably advise them somewhat because yeah. you, that was your whole life for a long time being Mr. Bank or man. Yeah. Yeah. No, right. it's, I think the, um, the hesitancy in, in my pitch or my uh, explanation of the club is uh, indicative of the uh, uncertainty in the back of my mind. So I'll give you two things. Okay. I, I operate on handshake deals. Yeah. I don't need contracts. I don't need anything of the sort. If I tell somebody I'm going to do something, I do it. And so 
I'm constantly giving people the information that they need in order to make a buying decision or to make a strategic partnership. And so for me, if I don't know whether I'm going to be able to manage a location because nobody wants to go there and there's no demand for it, I don't want to communicate that, hey, I'm going to have this phenomenal location that everybody can use as a part of their membership. There's a pivot from in-person operations where people are chasing me down and we have group meetings and there's much more of an in-person flavor to it all to the virtual operations to where we're having these intimate meetings in Zoom rooms and we have Zoom uh, collaborative masterminds and calls. All of that still exists and it's all gonna be very beneficial to our members, but I also want to continually communicate that don't make a decision that you know you're gonna get our uh, television studio six months from now because I can't, I can't guarantee that. And that's just me being open and honest about the, the situation that we're all dealing with is that if I can continue to create this type of value for our members, I will. The other thing is I'm pivoting from a model that is membership based where you know, I have 100 members, 150 members that all come in and pay a base fee and they get access to a shared amount of things, a shared amount of expertise by all of our masters and myself, a shared amount of space, a shared amount of, uh, of other amenities that come along with that. And I'm pivoting more towards a project-based model that says, listen, I want to bring these members and these great people together. I may not charge them much of anything because it, to me, it's more important just to get them together and maybe we'll monetize it based on the projects that we get involved with. Mm -hmm. And so it's a different mentality to say, hey, I'm constantly giving more and more amenities spread across an entire membership base to I'm going to repivot and just focus on the individual projects that are that some of our members can get involved with. And so that's kind of, I guess, the explanation that needs to come along with me not um, doing a good job of promoting the, uh, the business club membership. It's just because I want to make sure people are very clear on what they're receiving. What's that? You. I love the St. Louis Business Club. <laughs> I'm excited about it. It's a beautiful brand. And, and, and so there was not one single punch for you in the middle of that. I was, I think that, I think that actually, Mr. Lunt, you do have a certain charming humility. And, and so, you know, delivering a compliment to you, um, it, you know, it's a lot of fun. <laughs> I know I, I kind of, I, I can repel them like no other, right? <laughs> Don't even try to compliment me. <laughs> so, by the way, you're looking very handsome today. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you. I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there you go. You know, that I understand. It's wonderful to hear you talk about. And this, I am so excited that you did that because this is part of our Thursday show, which is called, you know, Brian Lunt is riding a lion. And that's the journey of entrepreneurship. So we're sitting in here talking about the St. Louis Business Club. And it, you are really riding that lion. Mm -hmm. and, sure. and you're now, you just described the, the ride that you're on right now is that pivot. And I'm sitting here thinking, wow, I think I can see both sides of this. You know, maybe it's even in a hybrid. It's an integration of that, you know. Yeah. And so you're, you're, why wouldn't you, you're providing the atmosphere, you're doing all this, people are paying a fee, but they're bringing their projects in, they're getting all kinds of help. Why wouldn't you take a percentage of that and, yeah. and, 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 you know, monetize everything. But the beauty of it is, is that people have opportunity, no matter what they're walking in with, they have opportunity to be there. Mm -hmm. And by the way, I think that there's something else that's really beautiful. If you're worried about what you can't maybe do in six months, maybe that's an inner dialogue to have about get it done now, figure yeah. out how you can get your whatever you want now, so that you're propelling your business. I mean, when you really stop and think about it, if we think that 2020 was the year of uncertainty, but well, 2019 wasn't and 2018 wasn't, give me a break. Every single year is a year of uncertainty. You can lay out your plans. I've done it every year. <laughs> yeah. You know, somebody dies, somebody walks in your life or out of your life, business goes kaboom, business goes flat. And, you know, it's just, there's the only thing we know about life is we have control over our mind and things are ever changing. Oh, absolutely. And it's, 
again, the, the change does not bother me. I, I thrive on change. I love the excitement of adapting, you know, even in the moment, you know, I think more focus in the now. And I really, you know, I think the majority of people that are happy really like their life right now. They're not worried about ha things that happened in the past or hung up on things that happen. And they're not constantly looking forward to the future. They're enjoying what they're doing right now. And when I'm in my element, enjoying a, a group facilitation, you know, navigating relationships, enjoying people, that's what I love to do. Mm -hmm. And, and so that, that part of what I do is very satisfying. What, what has made, I think the, the, outer environment have such an impact on me is that I believe in honesty and I want good information to determine what it is that I'm going to do. And I'm just worried that there's bad information out in the marketplace. Oh, yeah. and, and that's where, that's what, that's more so I think the unsettling side of things that I'm, that I'm trying to showcase is that when I am in person with people, I know that they, the information I'm getting is authentic because I'm getting it directly from them. Yeah. And that's why I encourage more local focus and being with people. And if you, even if you can't come in physically, at least you're getting a routine meeting, mm -hmm. weekly meetings with the people within your network so that you know, you can check on them, see how they're doing. You guys can care about one another. I mean, that's the community sense. It's this outside, you know, influences of information that I just don't trust. And that's, and that's, that's unsettling to me. And so my my focus has been to try and get as many people as I can inside of our business club so that we have, you know, vetted and authentic and good people that are trying to help one another. And so I'm a huge advocate for getting the community going. I'm just trying to get the details of what it actually is, you know, and there's always value. I mean, that I'm not worried about. I mean, I, I pride myself on trying to offer more value than people are spending their, their time, energy, uh, or money on. Mm -hmm. And, um, and so that's something that I'm constantly uh, trialing and making sure that we've got a good recipe for. It's just as any business owner uh, or any uh, negotiator is trying to develop, you know, what are the details of what it is that we're actually working with? And mm -hmm. because things here are in such a, a change right now, I'm constantly going, well, we're going to try this and we're going to try this and we're going to try this. And hopefully this is an outcome that everybody is, is, is feeling positive about. And right. in most cases, that's what we get. The last thing I'll say is that I'm actually navigating with too many options as opposed to not enough. I've got, you know, a location I can build, a business I can build. I've got an investment I can go into. I've got, you know, options, options, options. Which ones do I decide to put my time and energy into? Mm -hmm. And I think you'll see that with and I'm not saying that uh, this is me, but you'll see with a lot of very successful people, they have mastered the art of saying no to things that that aren't the best or most efficient use of time. And that's that's been challenging is trying to figure out, okay, given the parameters and the information that I know at this moment, what is the best use of my time and energy? Um, and it's it's just muddled that process, which I I you know, I like to pride myself in being able to do. And so it's, uh, it's definitely been an interesting time in our uh, careers and lives. So, yeah. Right. yeah. Well, one of the things that I noticed is that you've built a really friendly community. Mm -hmm. You've got people in there who know, like, and trust one another. Mm -hmm. um, it, it seems like people are getting to know one another or they already really know one another. And, and when, and when someone new comes in, there's a nice welcoming reception and, and it, and it, and it seems like for the most part, people are talking about being pretty happy. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, I think it's because we talk about relevant things to people. We don't talk about the, the BS that the, the media and other folks are, are hung up about. I also think it's funny that I can go to many people that I have good relationships with. And I think they would be shocked if they understood my, my political side because I do not talk about politics when I'm talking about business. I talk about what I believe in, um, but I don't, I don't talk about this, these conversations and these issues that are very um, toxic in our culture right now. I talk about how things are relevant to them and what I can do to help them directly and how, what kind of relationship we can develop. 
And if some politics or something comes up on the periphery of that relationship, it's not that big a deal because they know where my heart is and they know what I want out of the relationship that we have. Right. Unfortunately, I think our culture is the exact opposite right now with all of this social media and media. You've got the two extremes just screaming at each other and that's oh, all we're seeing right now. And the divide in our nation is just very, it's just unsettling. And I, I want to see how we can uh, be an antidote to a lot of that and, and get people in person, get people talking to one another and get them off of this BS that's going on. Well, you know, um, it's interesting because more and more people refuse to call themselves either party. Yeah. I would, and people say, you know, where are you politically? America. <laughs> yeah. Human. I just say I'm human, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And, and so <clears throat> really the thing I'm most interested in is to the dear government of the United States of America, quit misbehaving. Yeah. Dear congressional leadership, take care of the people, you know? Dear police, please, please answer our 911 calls. Please don't quit. Please don't retire. Please don't get the blue flu. And, and understand that there are people out here who know, love, and respect what it is that you do. Yeah. And then how about if us as people, as citizens, really understand we are humanity, folks. Mm -hmm. We are humanity. And every one of us is looking for happiness and love. And when we put those two things together, we can do anything. Mm -hmm. Happiness and love, it's, it's the formula of kindness. And then business happens. I want to buy my groceries from you. I want you to drive me somewhere. I need yep. you to take care of my money, whatever it is, you know, cook for me. And then the world becomes this really simple, easy place, right? But people are, man, they're like bantering out there and blasting and being vindictive i don't have the stomach for it yeah. it literally makes me feel queasy icky yeah and i think that's that's why i have such a motivation for getting people in a room together because if you are both behind your keyboards and you've never looked at each other's profiles and you never knew this person then you can say some outlandish things to somebody because you don't think you're ever going to meet them face to face but if you're nose to nose to somebody and you say the same types of things that you'd feel comfortable on a keyboard, you're going to have a different reaction. And so my hope is always to get people on the human level as quickly as I possibly can. So we can break down those walls. We can make that connection. And those, those awful thoughts that come out of being very distant from mm -hmm. others uh, go away. You know, I know people who have, are adamantly divided on certain issues and I can turn them into really good friends that have these most honest and fruitful and exciting conversations because you can see the passion they have for their position and they genuinely believe it. And when you've already made that connection on the human level, the two people can, can genuinely make a connection and understand the other person's side and say, I, I understand why you feel that way. You have presented your position in a way that I can empathize and get in your shoes and understand what you're saying. Yeah. And then we can still agree to disagree on the issue, but I see you on the human level. And that's, that's why I'm trying to get away from being on Zooms and being in social media and, and working on things that are too far away from us. I wanna be hyper local and I want people to meet in person. Yeah. Um, so are you noticing that people are coming in more? Is it starting to turn? I don't know. I mean, it's, it, I don't know, can be the answer to everything this, this last year. Um, I, cause I just don't, I, I, I usually have a, a good sense on where things are going, but it, there's so many things that don't make sense to me. And so I just don't know. I mean, I can, I can call up a hundred people right now and get a, and get a conversation going or get a meeting going and, and have them and have whatever I want. But a lot of that happened naturally. A lot of that happened because everybody was in that mode. And now it takes a lot more time and energy to make those things happen. And that's probably one of my frustrations right now is when you have an impediment to people just even meeting together, yeah. it's just a bizarre space to be in. And um, 
you know, and it is what it is. We have to deal with it. But, um, you know, I just don't know where things are going. I'm, I'm hopeful and I, and I have uh, positive outlooks on where it's all going, but um, I think it's dishonest to say I have it all figured out and I know exactly what's going to happen because <laughs> I just don't. <laughs> The show would go viral if you did. I got it. I got it. I have the answer. If you sign up for my 1999 webinar, I will give all of you the answer. Yes. Let's <laughs> go. Bada bing. Yeah. Uh, no, I don't do that. <laughs> I actually think I actually think I do have some answers. Good. I'm ready. I think that we need to get really comfortable in be here now. Yeah. You know, just be here now. It's the only thing we really know. I know that we are here right now. And if I can be comfortable in my space, in my skin right now, okay, then I'll wait and do the next thing. And I'll keep scheduling things that I know I can be comfortable in right now. I don't, I don't have a fear of the germ of this virus. I do have an absolute terror about the social psychology of it. I mean, if yeah. you know, if you're wearing a mask and somebody doesn't think you're wearing it right, or if you don't have your mask on, people start screaming at you. I mean, people are really no the the reasonability factor of humanity right now is a little absent. And 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 we, yeah, we're still drinking coffee, getting amped up. And it's not a good formula when you're under stress. And, yeah. and the other thing is. Don't worry about tomorrow because it'll always figure itself out. We're, we're functioning human beings. It always works out. Everything always works out. And by the way, the fact that we're sitting here means that not only are we survivors, we're thrivers and we have wisdom. Because mm -hmm. if you're watching the show, last time I checked our numbers, you know, we don't have like babies watching. You know, we've got like some teenagers in different parts of the world. We've got an adult population. So if you're functional enough to find this show, dial in, watch it, listen, then hallelujah, give yourself a lot of credit because you've survived 2020. You've made your debut entry into the very first month of, of 2021. And think about what you want for your mind, your body, your soul, your social life, your business life, and, and your health, you know, because when you consider all that, your health and well-being start to become vibrant. And when you do that in a relaxed mindset, then the world of opportunities open up to you. You know, so like you actually, Brian, are much further along on that path than what you credit yourself for, because I'm listening to everything that you're saying, and you got you you got this thing going with this guy and with this guy and then this guy and then and it's groovy stuff. And by the way, there is a virtual focus in each of those areas, mm -hmm. so that people and here's here's the life saving part of it. And we really need to give kudos to ourselves for being in this Zoom room. We are making sure that people don't feel isolated. A hundred percent. Yeah. And we're loving people through a virtual reality. And and I will say, and I'll promote the club specifically in our in our masters that we pulled together, you know, folks that I think have a mastery level in one of our of one of our arenas. Beginning this Wednesday, we're going to start um, having each one of our experts give a presentation. And mm. so my hope is to move through the curriculum that I've developed, which has six areas of life, six areas of business and have some education, have some information that's going out there. The one benefit that the virtual environment has given us is that if anybody listening wants to come into that room and hear about those things, they're welcome to come. And awesome. I want to spread that information. I want to share the St. Louis Business Club with, with dozens, hundreds, thousands, as many people who want to pay attention. Absolutely. I think it's going to be a good sentiment to say, come into this environment, Get educated in, in a, all avenues of life and business because we want to create that balance. And, and if we have to do that through the virtual environment first, and then it becomes a physical environment, I'm okay with that. Yeah. It's, just not, it's just not the recipe that I was leading with. It's just, yeah. that's what we're adapting to. We're going to persevere. Um, my dad for Christmas gave me uh, a copy of one of the signs that he's had in his office for at least 20 years, uh, and it's Winston Churchill, it says, never, never, never give up. Yeah, right. And he, he identifies that in me that I, you know, I don't ever give up. 
I never give up. I just change tactics. Mm -hmm. And so it's just a matter of figuring out which tactics are going to work the best for the, for the most amount of people and, and, and how we can accomplish the most uh, positive thinking and, and sharing of kindness. You know, I love that. And I, and as I think about that, I'm thinking to myself, <clears throat> so with these meetings that you're going to start doing a little bit differently on Wednesday until you run through everybody. Yeah. Are you recording those? I am. Yeah. What I want to do is the way that our format is, is we spend about 30 minutes doing some introductions if we got to the point where we're at hundreds of people's, I'd probably, I'd probably just identify the people that I wanted to in introduce themselves. Yeah. So uh, it'd be kind of the pinnacle people that I think can offer the most by uh, showcasing themselves. Then we do about 30 minutes of instruction or education or presentation, whether it's about the club, which is what we started with last week, um, or it's about what that, um, that topic of the week is. So our next one's gonna be more on, on life fundamentals. Okay. And then 30 minutes of, of really question and answer and discussion. And so that's the general format of our 90 minute meetings each Wednesday. Um, and we, we hold those every, every Wednesday at 1 PM uh, central. And so that format moving forward, moving forward is an excellent introduction into our community because it showcases, you know, at now dozen, couple dozen people that are a part of those meetings. Ultimately it just kind of gets your foot in the door of what is this thing all about? What can I see? okay, I got some good information. I want to explore that a little bit more. And for me, it's about identifying how someone fits. And that's kind of where I like to play is the overlap. Mm -hmm. You offer this, you want this, you offer this, you can complement this. How do we put these combinations together to make people have uh, really positive outcomes? And mm -hmm. that's, that's what I enjoy doing the most. I can I can get my hands dirty and I can go and work on project management and I can go play in a lot of these kind of minutia things, which is not what I enjoy doing. I can do it. Um, and that's okay. I can do that from time to time when, when necessary, but my, my real hope and focus is to be more of the, the quarterback of things and just see how it all unfolds with others, because I like to observe the positive outcomes that people, that people have. You want to be the quarterback or do you want to be the coach on the sidelines? Maybe more of the coach. Yeah. Yeah. I think so too. Cause talk about getting dirty. Oh my goodness. Those, those quarterbacks. I mean, they're like, first of all, everybody's after them. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. They, 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 they probably have the microscope under them more than anybody. Yeah. I'm not a football star, but I can tell you what, I do understand the positions, you know, like yeah. the guy who's a linebacker. I get it. <laughs> the guy who's a quarterback. He, yeah. So, um, yeah, I think that that's a beautiful design. Now, in the last two minutes that we have here, um, we need to tell people that they can go to the St. Louis Business Club, Google it, and you'll land there. Or Duck Duck Go it. One, yeah, 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 right. Uh -huh. And and just get in touch with Brian and talk to him about what you want. What's going on? Yeah, I mean, the, what I often say, the easiest way for me to get a relationship started with someone is to have them come to one of our weekly masterminds. And the way that people can do that is they go to our contact form on the website or they email me directly and I just send them the Zoom link for them to come in. I, I have developed that strategy um, as a way to make my time more efficient as well. And I encourage others to do that if you can set a group setting, because if I meet with everybody individually, before you know it, I have 10, 12 hours a week that just got zapped out of my time. But if I can get 10 or 12 people to come into a, a mastermind, that's a real efficient use of time for everybody. And I'm always hopeful they can get something out of it as well. And they will. I guarantee it. All right. On that note, everybody, this is Dr. Deb Carlin and Mr. Brian Lunt. And we will see you back here on Thursday. Same time, same place. Till then, peace out.